So I wanted to do some kind of video talking about sound novels for a while now. So I've not been feeling too great lately. Getting a lot of random PVCs. Which really like, kills my energy and I'm finding I have to sometimes in the middle of the day I just gotta lie down for two or three hours. Or even just randomly I'll feel weak. No, I don't I don't take anything for granted though, like I have a there's so many things I can do, like physical ability, I, I don't take any of it for granted. Things could be a lot worse. But some days, it's, you know, it's tough. Um, so I don't really have the, the energy to work on a big project, but I do want to talk about sound novels, because I really like these sound novels. Uh, and I find that a lot of people are, are not familiar with sound novels, even among people who um, are familiar with visual novels. Even though the term sound novel actually predates the term visual novel by several years, um, it, it's become an antiquated term and it, it describes a a particular movement that was popular in the 90s and then kind of faded out in the 2000s as, as um, the visual novel style became more popular. Uh, but the term visual novel was uh, originally created, I think, 1996 uh, by Leaf, their visual novel series starting with Shizuku, coined the term visual novel. Uh, but sound novel comes from back in 1992 with this Otogiri-so. Now, according to um, Koichi Nakamura, the founder of Junsoft, the idea with Otogiri-so originally was not going to have any um, pictures on the screen. Well, it, the background would just be like the pages of a t of a book, and and you would read text, and uh, uh, it would show you flipping the pages like you're like you're reading a a game book, as they call them in Japan. In the West, we call them choose your own adventure, but they're called game books in in Japan. Now, prior to Otogiri's Soul, uh, there were, of course, narrative adventure games. Um, but generally they were more like uh, text adventures on, on computers where you enter commands and the game will um, take action based on the commands you enter or in the latter half of the 80s you saw more menu based adventures which were essentially like text adventures but uh, uh, designed for consoles so you wouldn't type in your commands it would just give you a list uh, of what the game would accept, and you select your, your choices from the list. Uh, but with sound novels and Otogiri Soul, the idea was it, it's just like a, a choose your own adventure. So you read, and then it gives you a certain number of options, and that option sends you to uh, the next branch. Now, what makes sound novels interesting today is that they're they're a very particular style. Um, they usually have digitized photographs and instead of uh, the anime style visuals that you normally see in visual novels. And often they have these these silhouettes that you see here in, in Komatachi no Yoru. That's probably not nice to look at. <clears throat> and because they were developed back in the 90s, um, they have this very uh, low fidelity style, which is, is particularly befitting of horror games. 
and most sound novels are horror novels. Uh, you also see some mystery stuff like Komatachi and Mato uh, Tachi uh, no Nemuri and so forth, but um, a lot of them are horror. <clears throat> so the aesthetics alone are, are one of the major factors that make them appealing. Um, Otogiri so I find particularly interesting. It's meant to be played multiple times, and each time the events that occur are quite similar, and yet you see um, different variations on those events. So as you play it multiple times, you keep seeing these, these event variations, and uh, eventually you, you get to an ending that's uh, completely different, um, depending on the branches, but uh, it, it's this very like labyrinthine sort of story, and you keep hopping back and forth between these different branches, and it doesn't really make any sense until you get to the ending, uh, and even then the endings are... Uh, mutually exclusive. There's no, there's no canon that ties the story together. Um, it's a very fascinating kind of story. Now, Kamae Tachi no Yoru is, I think, the most famous sound novel, and one of the only sound novels to have an English localization. Although the localization was, uh, I think it was a mobile phone port, and it was very heavily localized, so it's it's not not really a great way to play it compared to a super fan comic version. This one's like a straightforward murder mystery. There were also some branching. Um, like sub scenarios that you unlock after you finish the main story, but the main story is the best one. Um, yeah, culture, don't don't bother. Uh, <laughs> um, Touch no Memory. Uh, this is based on a novel by Akakawa Jiro. I don't, I don't feel like talking about it. I'm too tired. It's not that great. It, it's okay. Has too many bad endings. Um, Sakura no Aji, and this is like a zombie B movie. It looks a lot like Kamatachi no Yoru, but uh, not as good. Um, now, this Sakura no Aji and Getsuma no Anubis were released on the same day, both published by Imagineer. They were developed by uh, different teams, and they, and they don't really have any relation aside from a, uh, a superficial reference to one another uh, within the text. But get some of the Anubis I really liked. It's um, it's kind of like a a John Carpenter, um, kind of like John Carpenter horror. Um, where there's like there's a bit of Lovecraft influence. It's definitely not a not full on Lovecraft, so you shouldn't go in expecting that. Uh, but it's it's a very psychological, atmospheric horror, um, with some of that uh, deep space, uh, parasitic, uh, superorganism kind of vibe. Um, Really good soundtrack. This one was uh, quite the surprise to me. Despite Anubis in the title, that that there's not really much. Uh, doesn't have much to do with Anubis. <laughs> that's I guess that's not really a spoiler. But um, some people compare it to Alien, like Ridley Scott's Alien, and you can kind of understand why based on the space parasite thing, but I think John Carpenter is a more accurate comparison. Um, let's see. So, 
でやったこういう話 This is my favorite sound の本そう学校は is、uh, quite unlike other sound novels in that it's not、uh, it's not a single story it's actually a collection of short stories、um, which you can play through in, in non-linear order so the idea is that you're a high school student who's a member of the school newspaper club and The president of the club has asked you to do,、um, to write an article about the seven school mysteries, Gakko no Nero Fushigi. And so, to help you learn about the, the school mysteries, you, meet, you arrange to meet with seven students after school who will each tell you a, a scary story. And when you get there, you only find six students.、Um, but you decide to proceed anyway since the seventh person doesn't show up.、Um, and so you can talk to the students in any order. And depending on the order you pick, they will have、uh, a different story to tell. And then you have hidden scenarios. There are eight hidden scenarios. That are unlocked by playing in, in specific orders and getting specific endings. Often they're like continuations of、uh, other stories.、Um, so in total, there are 50 stories, and within them, of course, you have branching paths. And often the choices that you make. Early in the story will completely change it. <clears throat> so the amount of content is, is just enormous. Like you can spend dozens of hours reading this and still discover new paths that you've never found before.、Um, and what, what's really interesting about it for me is. is Uh, the subtlety of the characters. Like, you, you, you hear that it's a collection of short stories, you think, oh, it's all about the, the stories that they tell. But really, the, the storytellers themselves play such an important role in the atmosphere and, and in the,、uh, the overall narrative. Now, when you meet them, you don't really know anything about them, but As you replay the game multiple times, you sort of pick up on their personality traits and their eccentricities, and you realize that they're all kind of、uh, strange and abnormal. And um, um, at the end of the day, the, the storytellers are probably even more scary than the stories that they tell because they're so、uh, out there. Now, the creator of this game. Takiya Ijima、uh, was the founder of, of the studio Pandora Box, and before that, he's also known for doing what was that game? Last Armageddon. He had、uh, Brain Gray before just doing Pandora Box, and I think Last Armageddon is his most well known game.、Um, but his, his idea with this was to show that、uh, humans are. Are ultimately scarier than ghosts and ghost stories. And even some of the ghosts that you,、uh, that you read about or, or, or meet in the game are humanized extensively.、Um, and Ichima is、uh, what I really like about his writing, is he's very good at. Um, displaying the, the aspects of human nature that we feel uncomfortable with and that we try to hide from ourselves or from other people. And he portrays those, that side of, of humans in a very,、um, very straightforward,、uh, understanding way. 
And you see that not only in this game, but uh, also some like Traverse Starlight and Prairie. Uh, it's very, very reflective about human nature and uh, very accepting of, of the parts of ourselves that we may not be willing to accept or, or we wish we could hide. Yeah, so that's got cool. <clears throat> this released in nineteen ninety five. In ninety six, there was a spiritual successor called Suki Komori. You know, like got cool, it follows the same structure and that you meet with six storytellers and you can uh, hear their stories in any order and the order uh, changes which story they tell again you have a lot of branching paths um, compared to Gakola I found these stories were not as good or at the very least they were not as consistent like the highlights are, are phenomenal but you also have a, a higher number of dud stories. Um, however, the characters I actually like better than Gakoa. They have some really uh, incredible characters in here. Good music as well. Um, and being such a late Super Famicom game, the graphics are really impressive. In a way, it's like, uh, I like Akola so much that anything is going to be a little bit disappointing, but uh, I, I think it's my second favorite sound novel that I've read, second only to Akola. Um, so if you like, if you like one of them, you'll certainly like the other. And this is a sound novel to Kuru uh, by ASCII. It's actually a, uh, a creation tool similar to... RPG Sukuru, allowing you to make your own sound novel. It also comes with a, uh, a sample game for you to read, but the sample game is it's more there to uh, to showcase features of the game. It is fairly feature complete as a as a creation tool. And I've played around with it a little bit. Ultimately, it's it's not really worth using too much because. Um, there's no keyboard accessory for the Super Famicom, so you have to enter all the all the text with controller, like by menuing down to the, the kanji that you want, and it takes a really really long time. Um, but that that's all the Super Famicom sound novels. I've been. It took me a while to get them all, especially because Tsukikomori is, is quite rare. Um, also, I've got some Anu Anubis and Zakuro no Aji are pretty uncommon. The other ones are fairly easy to get. Uh, it's just those three. Um, other than that, let's see. So, Yakochu had a sequel on the Nintendo 64. Yakochu 2. I have not played it yet. Uh, Otogiri Soul eventually had a spiritual successor on the PS3. I think this came out in 2006. Um, it's a bit more traditional story than Otogiri Soul. But it's, it's quite good. Got this very dreamlike atmosphere. Um, I really love the way that uh, people are shown, like their faces are never fully shown, like you see here, they're either obscured in shadow or they're cut off. Um, and you might not notice at first, but the backgrounds are always 
very gradually getting brighter and dimmer and just sort of um, pulsing back and forth in this brighter, dimmer way. And it gives it this really dreamlike feel. It, it sort of feels like that, that border between um, sleeping and being awake where you're not sure what's real and what's not. I like the PS3. If you like Japanese games, the PS3 is a good investment. There are a lot more quality games than some people give credit for. Um, I'm just gonna quickly go through my collection of Cosmo Ma. I haven't read this yet. Tsukuro 2, Saturn. Mochi is one of the most popular sound novels. 428, Shibuya Scramble is a, a spiritual successor to Mochi. A very similar premise. Um, wherein there are multiple protagonists and uh, the choices that you make in, in one protagonist story will have repercussions in the others. I have not actually read it yet. Um, I don't have a Saturn. I just I just buy Saturn games that I think I would like. This is a, this is a demo. <coughs> there are a lot of Saturn demos that you can find pretty easily. So I picked that up just for a collection. And on the Wonders one, there were quite a few sound novels. This one, Terrors. If you like lo-fi horror, this is the ultimate. Like, Wonders One doesn't have very good <laughs> graphics. Uh, like, it, it, can, it can it can only display in black and white, eight shades of gray. Uh, but the cartridge can hold a lot of data, so it can handle digitized photographs. Uh, it can handle lots of kanji. Um, you can have digitized audio, like there's some voice acting in this. Um, but because the, the hardware is so cheap, and it just comes out in such a distorted, lo-fi way. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll put some screenshots on the screen so you can see what I mean. Um, it's, 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 a, it's like a collection of short stories. <clears throat> and it's quite good. based on Ring. I think it's based on the movie, or the movie itself is based on the novel, I think, so. <clears throat> I don't know which came first. Terrors 2. Uh, this is a dual compatible game. Uh, it has full color support, but you can also play it on the black and white Wonders one. Unfortunately, I don't have a black and white Wonders one. I just have the color. But it would be interesting to try and play this in black and white because you can. I can just imagine how distorted it would be. Uh, but even from these images, you can see kind of <laughs> the appeal of this of this aesthetic. Uh, And then Last Alive, I think this is based on like a TV drama. It doesn't look that interesting, but when did this come out? 2001? Hmm. Not that like the Wonders One still had games in 2003. Even 2004, but not, not really 2004. 2003 was the last real year. <clears throat> so yeah, those are another sound novels that I'm Totally freaking exhausted. <sighs> yeah, um, just wanted to talk about them because there's no one to talk about these things with. The, the trouble with having 
niche interests is that there's no one to talk to. <laughs> there's no, like, no, nobody reads sound novels, but they're so good. Like, they're so awesome. They're so awesome, so, yeah, read them, check them out.